Greetings fellow humans, I'm Martian Boo, and today's pocket video is on Weezing Golem. I got the idea for this deck from a streamer named Spragles. The strategy with this deck is to use Weezing to stall for time while you set up a Golem. Golem is one of the two Pokemon that can benefit from the supporter Brock, which lets you add a fighting energy to one of your Golem or Onix in play. So when we build this deck, we actually cut the fighting from our energy zone so it will always give us darkness. With how tanky and aggressive Weezing can be, Golem feels like a fantastic partner for it, giving you a great Pokemon to sink all of your energy into while your wheezing makes progress. I hope you enjoy the games, and thank you so much for watching. Going second, that's pretty good. Starting Geodude, that's pretty bad. I don't know what I'm supposed to do when I start Geodude, other than be sad about it. This is one of the downsides of only having minus one retreat cost as far as being able to retreat. Is like, I feel like it. Um, <clears throat> having only minus one retreat cost to retreat is really good because it doesn't take away the role of retreat cost entirely, like a card like Switch does. But it's bad because there are some decks that like are just at an inherent disadvantage because their basic has two retreat costs. You know, it's impossible to get that thing on the bench. So, all I can say is, I guess I'm going to get wrecked. Mm, do I think that thing is going to kill my Graveler before it can become a... I don't know. I'll just like manually retreat if I think so. Has to be Marshy back for pocket sized chumbo times, it's true. What up, Pug? Pocket Monday today. Wait, Pocket Mon today. Mon. Oh, Pocket Mon today, Mon. Oh my goodness. That was pretty slow on that one. Eight days till non Martians get to play this game, it's true. How does the music and sound effects sound on your guys' end, by the way? Is it okay? Gonna be a weird comment for YouTube because by the time YouTube gets to see it, I will have been able to adjust it. So, like, just while I'm live, it's a little bit harder. <laughs> wow, you can't read that completely intelligible message. <laughs> Wait, they didn't attach to the active Rapidash? That's interesting. Kind of makes me want to keep going, except that I don't have a golem in hand. Thing is free, free retreat so as soon as I attach to the active that's just it's never retreating should I start over I'll regret it I guess I, I have two coughings worth of time to set that back up so but like how is a how is a Weasling gonna take down a Charizard? You know, hmm. Hopefully they don't get it out anytime soon. Hey, monster! I attached Martian energy to my pocket monster. Potato times commence. True. I I think that happened. Geodude, Brock, Weasling. Um, I guess I should. I guess I should. Just pressure with the wheezing, right? Like, we're not getting out Golem anytime soon, and yeah, we could be taking some some chaos. Like, powering up a four energy thing after I've already wasted three energies on other stuff is so weird. But they have had a really slow start. Like, is there even a Moltres EX in that deck, or did they not find it? Still trying to understand the game, but faking it has to be at least half the battle. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> Alright, now we get to start powering up the Graveler. And we get to knock out this Rapidash. Then, if they send up that Charmeleon, I'm gonna cry. Don't do it. Uh oh. Please don't evolve and just scrumbulous. Yeah, 
the golem has four energy needed to attack. I guess a, a Charizard couldn't knock out two Weezing in a row, right? They'd have to attach an energy and then take a turn off. All right, that's pretty cool. This I'm fine with. I could also Koga. Should I Koga? <laughs> this is like a wheezing deck with a golem finisher that it might get out someday. The wheezing the the wheezing line and koga I think is a really cool package. I wish that the muck wasn't like completely unusable, right? Like you can't even bounce the muck with koga. And it requires your opponent to be poisoned, right? And the only way to poison is to send up the, um... The only way to poison is to send up the... Oh, neat. Is to send up the Weezing first. So, like... You send up the Weezing, then you Koga the Weezing, send up the Muck, the Muck deals the bonus damage because you're poisoned, and then it's just stuck there because its retreat cost is high and there's no way to return it to your hand. So. Hey, there we go. So I'm gonna poison that Charizard. And... They're never knocking out Weezing, but they could Sabrina me. And the damage on the Weezing otherwise isn't going to matter. So it because of Sabrina, I'm going to do this here. So that next turn I can attach and Brock. The Weezing I like is when Marshy laughs when caught by surprise, yeah. <laughs> is this the new Hearthstone killer I haven't heard a lot about? I don't know that it's a Hearthstone killer, but it is a Pokemon mobile game. That's pretty cool. Hey, they did Sabrina. They don't realize that's helpful for me. Good deal. Alright. Well, now we get to finish them with Double Edge. They think this isn't coming. <laughs> and boop and boop get worked that was like an ideal game no it wasn't <laughs> uh, it was an interesting game <laughs> I wonder if x-speed is still more worth it than potion it, it's it would be in there for the sole purpose of well the purpose of Getting Geodude out of the active spot when we start with it, but also the purpose of getting it out of the active spot when it gets Sabrina up there. But as soon as you evolve to Graveler, and as soon as you evolve to Coughing, you know, it stops being relevant, right? So. Has there been any, any updates yet? As far as, like, have they added anything to the game? No. I did have to update the game once, but I don't know what changed. <laughs> Alright, so this would be good that we're going first, except that I started Geodude instead of my friend coughing here. So now it's whatever. Alright, we're powering up that Geodude. No Graveler yet. Unlucky. You know what else would be cool is Swoop Teleporter. If they, if you could like, if there was an item that lets you send one of your basic Pokemon back into your deck, and was that Swoop Teleporter? Surprise Time Machine was the re-evolve one, right? Yeah, Swoop Teleporter, like send the Geodude back into your deck and get a coughing instead. That'd be, that'd be cool.
like as a way to like give you a random different one from your deck. There are a few bugs they fixed with the patch. Ah, I see. Will there be content updates in the future? Sure, yeah. Definitely. All right, goodbye. Goodbye, friend Geodude. And then if they Sabrina me, I guess I just lose, right? <laughs> Disaster. Be so nice if any of my various complaints were addressed. I feel like I've been very how things should be this morning instead of enjoying how things are. But I keep starting with Geodude. That's my excuse. <laughs> this thing. This is the first time I've seen anyone play this. Seems like a good attack. Um, potions will not save my wheezing. Hmm. So, they're probably going to retreat, right? I assume so. Okay, potions will prevent my opponent from retreating the Pikachu. For all the good that does me. Okay, so more playing around Pokeball nonsense. I think there's a chance it's better to have only one Geodude, so you're more likely to start coughing. And then you just use the Pokeballs to tutor the Geodude, but like, it's so hard to find stuff already. Time to cut one Geodude. Yeah, it's weird, right? Like, I don't know. But as soon as you do that, like, you have to draw the other coughing for that to have been helpful. Because if not, they just Sabrina kill your only Geodude and then your deck doesn't work. It's just like... <laughs> well, all of this would be fixed if Pokeball just like gave you three options of basic Pokemon in your deck. Oh my goodness, my opponent is a saint. My opponent is a sweet, sweet, sweet potato. Also, my, my Potion Gambit worked, right? Like, that paid off. Um... It'll be really nice if... <sighs> It'll be really nice if they just let the Helioptile die here. They'll probably X speed, right? But yeah, if they let it live, we can Koga. S sweet. <laughs> That's awesome. Alright, so the... The Electros on the bench does not one-shot a Weezing, so we can even Kogo one more time. Hmm. I think my opponent had this as long as they were willing to circle circuit the... the wheezing. I think I was in a pretty tough spot if they did that, but how are they to know that I don't have a Brock and a Golem in my hand, right? I, I think you can assume that I at least don't have the Golem. Magneton, when you also have Heliolis and Electros. Interesting. They let it die coming back to my turn? Good for me. Chat, everything's going great for me right now. My opponent's making a little whoopsie oopsie over there. That's what I think's happening. I get to start shipping away right now? That's great. Do this. I do this. I do this. Hmm. <laughs> They have to flip for the paralysis. 
Could that be auto paralyzed? I don't know how you balance that. Because, like, stage twos are so hard to get out, and there isn't a lot of lightning acceleration that affects Electros. I'm just trying to decide if I think it needs to be flip. Hmm. Unlucky for them. Didn't matter, though. So I'm just going to Koga. But also, I don't want to let it die, right? Because I need more than one turn. Like, uh, I need another knockout after this golem. So if they come up and... What are they going to one-shot it with? Literally nothing? Maybe I should have let it die. Huh. <laughs> Interesting. I wonder if the Magneton's just there to be something that can power up on its own. This strikes me as the type of thing somebody cobbled together without a lot of resources, right? Like, they're just playing what they have access to. So it could just be that, like, Magneton's supposed to be there as a, an attacker that can charge itself up. <laughs> thinking about it. Will they get the heads? It would matter this time. I don't have another Koga. Nope. They got wrecked. Alright. Golem is online. Golem is online. We're going to finish him off. I guess I should have attached active, huh? If I attach active, then they can't just sit there and not knock something out to stall. Like, I don't think that does them any good, right? Because at some point, they're going to knock something out. Or my poison's going to knock something out. Yeah. So it doesn't really matter. If they want to, if they want the slow death, it's fine. <laughs> Is this game's music, or has your playlist drastically changed? It, this is the game's music, yeah. <laughs> I got a comment on one of my vids yesterday that they felt like I needed some music, and when, when I've skimmed through it, I kind of felt that way. So, experimenting if the game's music helps the ambiance for the YouTube at all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And boop. <laughs> so much damage. Wow. All right, we started coughing, which is great. Starting coughing is good because Weezing is a stage one that requires one energy to attack. And so we actually get an edge by going first. Like we can actually take advantage of being able to evolve faster. And starting coughing is also good against this Mewtwo EX deck because Mewtwo is weak to dark. So I think that's a big advantage of the Weezing is Mewtwo Gardevoir is really popular and both of them are weak to dark. So you just get to shred them with coughing while they're trying to set up. Who is the pretty dude on the left? My name is Mc, McStung, McChungus, Mc, McPicklesburg, right? If that makes any sense. It's also really funny because Weezing is a poison type, which was consolidated into the dark type. So psychic Pokemon are weak to dark, but Weezing isn't supposed to be dark. But Weezing is weak to psychic because poison is weak to psychic for some reason. <laughs> so uh, it's funny that this isn't weak to Mewtwo and this is weak to, to Weezing, but that's just how the you know type consolidations worked out. I'm actually super dead if I don't get a basic. If, if they have Gardevoir and I don't have a basic, I'm dead. Dead as a potato. 
Martian Steel, your Pokemons, show me them. All right, this is wheezing. All right, come on, any basic, any basic, any basic. Ah, all right, so we need them not to have Gardevoir. If they have Gardevoir, this is a wash. If they have Gardevoir, this is Jover. <laughs> so unfortunate. We didn't see a second basic in eight cards. Don't have Gardevoir, come on. Oh, brutal. You use, use Koga to dodge the KO, yeah. I assume you're being cheeky, but that that would make me lose the game. If I if I remove my last Pokemon from the board, I just I lose. <laughs> New B. Well, that made me sad. Moving on. I've started not like, the thanks does take a little bit longer than just pressing X. So sometimes when I'm feeling slightly impatient, I've started not thanking people because it doesn't matter, right? Like, once you get a certain amount of tickets, you don't need any more tickets. Like, there's no reason to have tickets after you've played for a couple days. So, like, I'm, I, I don't feel like I'm actually costing my opponents any resources by not giving them a ticket with the thanks. The other thing is you can only earn so many tickets that way in a day, right? So, like, the likelihood that my opponent needs the ticket that I'm giving them isn't super high. Like, I don't know. So anyways, because tickets don't matter, I don't super feel obligated to press the thanks button anymore. I usually do it if I'm not feeling impatient, but sometimes I'm feeling impatient and I'm just, I press the X instead. They could have hard fixed this energy mismatch, mismatch, just like they did with Zapdos. What do you mean? I don't get it. All right, we again don't have a basic, which is perfect. Not being able to take actions while waiting for animations will make me pull my hair out. Yeah, I've. I'm starting to get used to it, but yeah, it it's gotten a little annoying that I can't just, you know, start playing my next card until one is completely resolved. Yeah, uh, as whatever is this game is about that, Pokemon Live is worse. Alright, good. Another game of... No... Basics... But as long as we get a basic this coming turn, I think it'll still be okay. Because this Pikachu will be very pressured into retreating, lest it get knocked out by my active we Oh, thank goodness. Um, I actually don't. I don't care which. I. I maybe I prefer coughing actually. Hmm. I probably did prefer coughing, but it's okay. They still need to get another basic to knock this out, so. And if they leave out the Pikachu, the Pikachu gets knocked out coming back to my turn. So it's not necessarily the end of the world. If I top deck Graveler, then I'm still on track to play Golem next. But I have to top deck Graveler. Are well, they going to give me time? That's cool. I appreciate that. Zapdos isn't supposed to be weak to lightning, is it? Oh, I see, I see what you're saying. So, Weezing can be weak to fighting because Weezing is weak to ground and ground is represented by fighting. <clears throat> so I, I still think Zapdos being weak to lightning is unique in that Zapdos is never weak to lightning. Like there's no, like that. that's still, they made that up. Hmm.
<laughs> but like you're talking about intention like I I think everything they did is intentional uh, I guess I don't understand what you're saying All right, cool. We're gonna get to attack with Graveler. Will resistance be missed? Resistance is relevant so infrequently in the paper TCG that, like these days, that I think it's vestigial at this point. That it's good that they got rid of it. Like it almost never matters. It's it's something that like can randomly hose you if you forget about it, which you did probably because it matters so infrequently. Like, you'll you'll declare an attack that you shouldn't have made because of the resistance, but because you haven't thought about resistance in like, you know, two years, <laughs> you accidentally lose a game. I mean, intentional in a balanced way. In this case, they chose a type that Weezing can be weak to. So I don't think this relates to Zapdos. Zapdos, I don't know what they were doing going for with that. I don't think it was made for balance. I think it was made to match the other two birds. As far as why they went with Zapdos being weak to lightning, even though it's never weak to lightning. Mm -hmm. That's my best guess anyway. All right, this golem is certainly going to get to attack right, twice, right? Because the most Pikachu can do is 100. Yeah, most Pikachu can do is 100 with a Giovanni, and this would have 110. All right, starting Geodude. Unfortunate. Oh, is this the same person we just played with the Dragonite Bruxish deck? We have a, well, yeah, we have Geodude and Graveler and Golem in hand. So if we find a Brock, we could be okay. Brock doesn't even one-shot Dragonite, right? Hmm. So we need to poison it first and then Golem it. I don't know, chat. Oh, I don't have a Brock. I have a Koga. So, still not in that good of a spot. They haven't found a Dratini yet. <laughs> Alright, there's their Dratini. So for all we know, they're all set. I guess, oh, they're attaching active. I don't like that. I would start working on the Dratini, but I guess it, it like depending on their hand, that could be good. I'm actually gonna retreat you, dude. So I'm not gonna evolve for now because it'd be harder to retreat it. Actually, if I draw a Brock, should I just go for it? Like, they still have a lot of energy to go. Guess what I'll do is I'll potion this turn and not retreat yet. There's the Brock. Okay, okay, okay. Alright. Potion. Alright, so we're just gonna. I'm just gonna golem through. So the reason I potion for not full value there is because if if this is damaged, then Bruxish does extra damage. So if the opponent's active Pokemon has damage on it, this attack does 60 more. The idea is to couple the poison from the Weezing with the extra damage from the Bruxish, which is kind of cool. Like a kind of cool way to run Dragonite, I think. But... <clears throat> okay, so they're just gonna... They're gonna evolve. 
So they are going to get to do all that damage, but... I don't think the Dragonite's going to be up in time, right? They can deal... So I'm going to deal 120 to myself with... By the time the Dragonite comes up. So I have 10 on me. I'm going to deal 50 to myself now. They come up and deal 70. So I'll still have the damage to hit the Dragonite. And then... Hmm. It might come down to me... So they attach energy now. No, they still can't. They still can't hit the golem, right? I knock out. They can't hit this, but I knock myself out, and then they could hit after. Okay, so maybe we are in a bit of trouble. All right, we got a, another basic, which is good. Please be coughing. Please. All right, well. Oh no, he knocks himself out now. I miscalculated. Okay, so I think I'm actually in a bad spot then. Because this wheezing is never taken. Like, well, we get, we get a full turn of poison and attack before they can even do anything. So maybe we're okay. Did I just freeze? No. Are you guys still there? I'm hoping that I got like, that I can reconnect to this. Cause this is an interesting game. I would hate it if I couldn't reconnect. Looks like I'm going to be able to. Also, I'm used to Hearthstone where I have to like close out the screen. Look at that. Oh, sick. All right. So that's kind of bad if I don't top deck Weezing. Actually, I think we're back in a bad spot if I don't top deck Weezing. But they have water energy coming up, so I still get a little bit of extra chip. Mm. Yeah, I need to top deck Weezing. No, I can just retreat. Okay, we're, we're fine, we're fine. We're fine. We just have to retreat. I forgot the coughing doesn't have an unreasonable retreat cost like a Geodude does. <laughs> All right. Poisoning, can you believe the Pokemon TCG Live doesn't have a reconnect feature? If you get disconnected in live, you're disconnected. It's over. Game's over. <laughs> So yeah, you, like, if they had a lightning this turn, they could win. Yeah, if they had a lightning this turn, they would win. But because they keep hitting water, they're hosed. <laughs> Attaching their lightning to the Rex thing. I, when I was playing the, when I was playing the, the Dragonite deck, it felt to me like it was the most broken, terrible deck of all time, right? Because if everything goes right, it's just, it feels unstoppable. But there's so many things that just can go not right, including what's happening to my opponent right now, which is they're continually not hitting water energy. So, or not hitting lightning energy. They need the other type. <laughs> uh... So then when you do finally attack, sometimes, you know, too much damage is dealt to something with low HP, so you waste a bunch of damage too. So like, it, there's a lot of, it's, 200 is so much to deal with one attack in this game. But it, it's really hard to power up the Dragonite, and a lot of stuff can go wrong, like what's happening to my opponent, is my point. So it, even though it's like a really broken attack, it's also kind of bad. <laughs> Opponent has retreated. Okay, so now this is great for me. 
Oh my goodness, I drew everything. This is great for me because I started powering up this golem. So next turn, no matter what, I can knock out whatever they have. I can't believe I powered up and got to use both golems. That's crazy. Is this the same as the paper version? Also, hi, Timonator. Um, it's it's based on the paper version. So like the, the rules are similar, but they're not exactly the same. Like for example, you don't run energies in your deck. You have an energy zone right here that dispenses energy once per turn. And you don't have any control over it other than to say what could be in there. So you can choose for something to be in there that you're that is either in, like for this, for this deck, I cut the fighting energy so that it always dispenses darkness so that Weezing can always attack. And then the, the Brock handles the fighting that the Golem needs. <clears throat> but, and my opponent cut the dark so that it's always dispensing water and lightning so that they can power up the Dragonite. But that's the extent to which you have control over it. It otherwise gives you a random energy from the types you've selected to be possible. But there's also two, be two less bench slots and 20 card decks. So like, it's generally similar to the paper TCG, but it is, you know, it's based on it. It's not like a direct port. All right, starting coughing for once, that's great. Excuse me. Oh, and we're gonna have a Geodude, so it's pretty good. Is it always evenly distributed or can you choose the ratio? Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. But no, it's it's randomly distributed. So you pick what can be in there and then it'll give you a random one of what can be in there every turn. I, uh, I really, <clears throat> I don't want them to mess with that other than, like, I don't want them to add some, like, weird rule where the third energy is always different or something like that. I want them to just keep it as it is, but I want them to put in, like, an item card that allows you to alter the energy that's available or alters the energy that's available next turn or something like that. Like, if you could pay, play an item and then swap what energy is currently in, available to you or which energy is going to be available to you next turn, I think that would make a sick item. That'd be a good way, like, for dual-type decks, that'd be a good way to balance it out without making it, like, awkward. <laughs> Is the icon in the bottom right a preview? Right. So you, you see in the top left, oh, now you can't because it says waiting for opponent, but there's a big water energy that's kind of fluctuating. That's the energy that my opponent has this turn. And then the smaller one is previewing what's going to be there next turn. So yes, right now on the bottom right, you can see I'm getting a darkness energy next turn. And as it comes back to my turn, that will go, that will become my big energy and a new preview will show up, which will also be dark because there's only dark in this pool. You can't store them? No, if you don't use it, you lose it. Mm -hmm. All right, can we get a wheezing? We cannot, unlucky. We still have, unless they get a good Misty, we still have a turn before. We still have a turn before this coughing is getting knocked out. Cloister? Interesting. I mean, like, I just hadn't noticed the shelters yet. <laughs> but yeah, Cloister is interesting. I think it's only minus 10 from attacks, though. So that's not super relevant against anything. Yeah. They're like, make it harder to do chip damage to it, but it'll otherwise just knock stuff out. That red card is good for me because I wanted a Weezing. And we got one. Sick. I also didn't have a Brock, right? So everything that's good in my hand, that was good about my last hand, is still present, which is great. But... 
We have the upside of having a Weezing now that we didn't have before. Red card is such an awkward card. Now we have everything we ever wanted, so great. Good for me. I think my opponent just loses, right? So I do this. And then we can knock them out with the other Weezing. Right? And... Then we'll just finish off whatever with the golem. Cloister, I hardly, yeah. True. True. My opponent is about to get wheezinged into oblivion. So they go 10 to me. Now I think I just sent up Golem, right? Now that they've done that. It's a, it's a shame not to be able to capitalize on the chip damage, but I want to attack with Golem before they have something else powered up that can hurt the Golem, right? I don't want to just give them time. Given that the Weezing isn't going to be able to knock them out this turn. Hmm. <laughs> So yeah, even if they had something that could attack this turn, they're not dealing 100 damage to it. The most they can deal is... N well, they couldn't even do 90, right? Because they'd have to do... They'd have to play Misty, and then they'd also have to play Giovanni to do the 90. So yeah, we're just, like, out of range. Which is great. Imagine not drawing Mus Misty. That would be embarrassing, I know. But the thing is, with that kind of luck, you know that if they had drawn the Misty, they'd have gotten a Tails. <laughs> Opponent got wrecked! What does the account experience do? So whenever you level up, you get a pack's worth of hourglasses, a wonder pick's worth of hourglasses, and I think you get some stupid shine dust or whatever that stupid stuff is. That nobody cares about. I don't. Um... So you get some resources. Do you get pack points? I think you get some pack points too. Pack points is good. Shine Dust adds the flare to the cards. I think it looks stupid. So I, I haven't been flaring any of my stuff. But yeah, so every time you level up, you basically get a pack and a pick, which is nice. <laughs> Wow, that is really good for me. Really good for me. Like, being on this side of red card so many times, I just, I feel like it stinks. I feel like red card is so bad. My opponent is about to feel the the punishment of having red carded me, because I didn't have a Weezing before, and now I do. So they just get to lose to me. Look at this. Look at this. Why don't you just lose to me? Hmm? Oop. <laughs> uh, 